bring them sounds at one time. I'm up early in the morning, huh? To get the scrella, scrella. blue face pillar, face pillar. the blade dealer. Uh, make a nigga forfeit, yeah. cause I'm the realest. Hey, niggas talking short shit, nah, I need a million. Uh. Big stepper, Big stepper. yeah. I be stepping, stepping. Cooling kit with the flip switch, bitch. That's the weapon. No drama. drama. Welcome to New York Giants. Full access. Nice legend. Bring them sounds at one time. I'm hard, and we got you. And that's it, man. Go purchase Big Passports Talk merch and support the family, man. And welcome to Big Passports Talk. Thank you for your support. Shane and Brian Dabo am building this team, which gives and he gives his blessing for them to go ahead and get that quarterback if they believe they need to get another quarterback for the New York Giants. So this really debunks all the John Mara is forcing these decisions on a new regime. What's going on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all platforms? Welcome to another episode of New York Giants Full Access with your boy Big Pat Sports Talk. In today's episode, Giants owner, New York Giants owner, John Mara breaks his silence and he gives Joe Shane and Dabo the green light to get their quarterback of the future. If they decide to do so, he says he's 100% behind them and he will let them do their jobs. Now, this is, this is kind of groundbreaking because a lot of Giants fans still believe that John Mara is meddling in the affairs of building this team. Um, a lot of people still feel that John Mara forced Daniel Jones on on Joe Shane and Brian Dable, and that may be true. A year or two, uh, about two years ago, the forced Daniel Jones to get a contract with the New York Giants, signing him for 160 million. But he's came out today and said that he gives total control to Joe Shane and. Brian Dabo and building this team, which give and he gives his blessing for them to go ahead and get that quarterback if they believe they need to get another quarterback for the New York Giants. So this really debunks all the John Mara is forcing these decisions on the new regime. The reason why this is interesting to me is because now I do believe that he will allow his regime to do their jobs. First and foremost, the first clue was Barkley is no longer a giant. Because if he was to interfere in that, Barkley would have a $17, $18 million contract with the New York Giants. Because he beloved Saquon Barkley and he brings him money. But he decided to let Joe Shane and Brian Dable handle their business business and not overpay for Saquon Barkley. So that was my first clue of Mr. John Mara not meddling in business affairs. So with this green light with Joe Shane and Brian Dabo, it gives them carte blanche on if they do want to trade up with per se the Patriots and go up and get a J.J. McCarthy or Drake May. Maybe even a uh, Jaden Daniels. Who knows? But I think this is showing that he has a clue that he needs to get out of affairs, not to try to be the Jerry Jones type owner and meddle in GM affairs of signing players, trading for players, re-signing players, scouting, and all that because he knows that's just not his stick. So I really believe that he's just backing off and allowing these guys to do what they do. And he's just opened up his checkbook and he wants this team to be good again. You know, so I really think this is a very good thing for the New York Giants as, as a whole, as an organization. And kudos to John Mara. 
Because being a billionaire owner, you're going to want to be in the affairs of your team. This is something that you own. This was passed down from his father, the Duke. And yes, he is the owner. He should have some say, per se, of what goes on with his team. But kudos to him for having the ability to step back and finally let a regime run this business the way it needs to be ran. So all this tells me is, is that Joe Shane and Brian Day were probably not going anywhere for, for, for a good amount of time because I do believe he's going to let these guys build this team the way that it should be built, which is a great thing. Now, another thing that he said is about the offensive line. He said, not being able to build an offensive line for over the past 10 years is absolutely embarrassing and it's troublesome and he's embarrassed by it, which he should be. You should be embarrassed by not building the trenches the way the trenches are supposed to be built, especially as a New York Giants. The New York Giants were built off the trenches, off the defensive line and offensive lines. That's what we do. Good running game, have a quarterback to come up with the clutch plays when they need to, and get after the quarterback. We haven't done that for almost a decade now. And he's absolutely right. It is absolutely embarrassing. Because that's not New York Giants football. That's not the way we play football. No matter what these fans think, this new age football is supposed to be, we're supposed to throw the ball deep nine times out of ten plays. We're supposed to throw the ball over the yard. The quarterback's supposed to have the 4,000, 5,000 yards every season. That's not us. That's really never been us. We really never have ever had a quarterback that was revered in the NFL. Phil Sales wasn't revered. Jeff Hosteller wasn't revered. Kerry Collins wasn't revered. Eli Manning is not as revered as he should be. But we've really never had that quarterback that all the fans just go goo goo gaga over. We've really never been that team. But what we have been is very good across the offensive line, and we didn't need 10 first round picks to do it. We just had tough, gritty offensive linemen that were very versatile and could play many positions. And that's what we're getting back to with the signing of John Runyon. He could play tackle, both guard positions. The signing of uh, Luminor, he could play tackle, right tackle, and both guard positions. We're getting back to that. And hopefully these signings that we did in free agency this year help us get back to that. The owner shouldn't have to come out and say, I'm embarrassed because we couldn't build the offensive line. You should have got some people in office that could build your offensive line. And yes, they have tried, but they've picked the wrong people. And sometimes that happens. But it looks like we're getting back to our roots to where the owner is not putting his nose in people's business when it comes to his GM and his head coach. And he has allowed them to build the team, a la Bill Parcells, a la Tom Coughlin. See, John Merrill let Tom Coughlin have carte blanche of what he wanted to do with his team, him and Ernie Accorsi, and it got him two Super Bowls. It's not until he started butting his nose and wanted to get the guys that you really love, the high-priced, the, the revered offensive coordinators, we're going to throw up 30, 40 points a game, blase, 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 getting away from the power run game, and look what happened. See, when these fans, they don't know to see when they want to change and when they got to change, our history started to change. Our organization started to change for the worse. See, when we got focused on the flash, Odell Beckham Jr., Evan Ingram, we lost our way. And these fans cannot see that. 
We're not a franchise that puts up 40 points a game. We're a franchise that can put up 20 points and hold the other team to 10. We're a franchise that can sack your quarterback six to seven times or get so much pressure on the quarterback that it, it, it ruins the, whole, the, the team's whole game plan. We're a team that ran the ball at you. You knew that we run the ball. You still couldn't stop us. Do you guys remember that Ravens game when Brandon Jacobs and Bradshaw ran straight through them? See, we stopped being the bullies and started getting bullied when he started putting his nose in business affairs. And that's what you get, Mr. Mayor, an embarrassment. Now, now, I'm glad that you see that it's an embarrassment. And I'm glad that you see that it was part your fault and now you're stepping back. You see, John Mayer, and then shout out to NYG because he said it, and I started thinking about it, John Fair, John Mayer listens to the fans wholeheartedly. That's why you had Odell Beckham for so long. That's why Saquon Barkley was picked. That's why Ben McAdoo was made head coach. Because all these fans, oh, I want a high-profile offense. I, I want touchdowns. I want 30, 40 points a game. Let's get with the times. And when he tried to get with the times, we've had a long time getting our ass whooped. Because we're getting away from our roots. Now, I'm not saying that Brian Dabo is going to go back to the past where we ran the ball the way we ran the ball when we had people like Joe Morris, Rodney Hampton, Jacobs, Bradshaw, Ward, Tiki. I'm not saying that they're going to go back to those times. But I do know that they have the blueprint of getting these trenches fixed and going about their business. Because you still need the trenches in order to pass the ball around the yard the way you want to pass the ball. Even though we're in the freaking metal Meadowlands in MetLife where the winds are going crazy. And you really need to be running the ball. Why don't you fans think about clock control? Time management. Having a fresh defense. That comes when you're able to run the ball and control the clock and continue to move the chains. That's the teams that won Super Bowls for us. It wasn't Eli Manning throwing the ball all over the yard, throwing for 5,000 yards and 40 touchdowns and 50 touchdowns. No, it was Eli Manning playing very good football. And the defense giving, giving him the football, giving him the chance to come back and win those games to be the clutch quarterback that he was. See, that's what got us Super Bowls. That's what got us in the playoffs two years ago, the running game. And playing defense. So I want you fans to really think about what really needs to be done for us to get back to being the New York Giants that everybody beloved, the New York Giants that were in playoff contention, the New York Giants that brought home Lombardis, the New York Giants teams that nobody wanted to play. We ran the ball, we got after your quarterback, and we play, and we got clutch, clutch play from our quarterbacks when we needed them the most. And that's what brought home Lombardi's. So you can continue to bash. You can continue wanting this supreme offense and this guy quarterback that you're praying for so much. But I'm all old enough to know the blueprint on what the New York Giants really are. John Mayer keeping his nose out of business, which he has started. Fixing the offensive line, which we have started.
fixing the defensive line and getting after the quarterback, which has been started. Those are the top three things that we need, and we're starting to get back to it. So we're going to see. This is a very good sign for John Mara. He's given Joe Shane and Brian Debo carte blanche over Daniel Jones, who everybody knows that he beloves. So if he's willing to do that, that means he's giving them 100%. He's giving them the green light, like they say, the keys to the ship. And kudos to John Mara for doing it. Because that's what needs to be done. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that big blue join button to join the big blue crew and talk your talk with Big Pat Sports Talk. Go cop you some merch. Y'all keep clicking on my merch. Go ahead and get you a hat, get you a hoodie, get you a shirt. And whoever just bought them hoodies and shirts, thank you guys for your support. I really appreciate it, bro. You guys are the reason why I keep doing this. So thank you for your support. Go copy some nice fit, the official clothing line by Big Pass Sports Talk. And until the next episode, you know what it is, man. Be. Welcome to New York Giants for Access.